Autoro code. Um, one of the things I did on, I talked about on Tuesday is the, is the following. Um, I hope you can see this. I hope this is focused out in nature. Okay. Now, one of the things I, I said on Tuesday is that the possible um, bivariate extreme value distributions have certain representations. I gave you four different representations. One of them is the following, that if the marginals belong to the Gumpel limit or the Gumpel domain, then the po possible forms for G, the bivariate extreme value distribution can be expressed in this form where F1 and F2 are, F1 and F2 are non-negative functions and they integrate to one, okay? That's, that's one representation I gave you on Tuesday. The, sec the, the second representation I gave you on Tuesday was this one, where if the marginals belong to the, once again, the Gumpel domain, then the possible forms for the bivariate extreme value distribution can be, can be expressed in this way. Where k, if the, k is a function that satisfies these four condi five conditions, right? And uh, the third representation I gave you is this one, where if the marginals belong to the Fréchet domain, then the possible forms for the bivariate extreme value distribution can be expressed like this, where A is a function from the unit interval to the unit interval, it satisfies these four conditions. And the final representation I gave you on Tuesday is this one. If the marginals of G, G is the limiting bivariate extreme value distributions are exponential. Remember these are, I'm sure you guys know, these are the, the CDF of an exponential distribution. Then the possible forms for G bar, G bar being the survival function uh, corresponding to G can be expressed in this form where once again, A is a function from the unit interval to the unit interval, and it satisfies the same four conditions. So these are the four representations I talked about on, on Tuesday this week. Now the tutorial today, the tutorial today is based on one of these four representations. This is the tutorial sheet. I don't know whether you had a chance to look at it or not. The tutorial sheet. This is the tutorial sheet for today. There are three questions in the tutorial sheet, right? And each of them gives you a form for G bar. G bar is the, you should, you should say G bar, not F bar. That was a typo. The question one gives you a formula for G bar. And the first part is to show that it is a bivariate extreme value distribution. So what you need to figure out is, what you need to figure out is which of the four representations you need to use to show that this is a bivariate extreme value distribution. That is to do the first part, right? So I'll show you how to do the first part uh, right now, okay? Okay, so let me, let me so start with question question one. Okay. Um, you cannot see my writing, just please, please shout, okay. So this is question one. So you are given G bar, which is Right, where x is positive, y is positive, and theta is a number between zero and one. Right. Now we need to the first thing we need to, in order to show that this is a bivariate extreme value distribution, we need to figure out which of the four representations this corresponds to. Right. So, so to do part A. All right, now, because it starts with G bar, we have a feeling that it may correspond to the, the, the final, the fourth representation I gave you. Now, remember the fourth representation, uh, 
let me show you that once again. This is this is representation number four. For representation number four, the marginals must be exponentially distributed, right? So, so that's we need to check whether that is the case here, right? So, to find the marginals of this, you just put x equal to one, so x equal to zero here. So that will give you. If you put x equal to zero here, you will get e of minus y. And similarly, this is the y marginal. To find the x marginal, you put y equal to zero. That will give you e of minus. So, so these two imply the following that the So both, so from this, you can see that the, the marginals of G are exponentially, exponentially distributed. So both are with parameter one. All right? So, so in other words, in order to show that this is a bivariate extreme value distribution, we need to show that this can be represented. This can be represented in this in this form, in this form where a is a function that satisfies these four conditions. Sorry, these uh, four conditions: that this one, this one, and this one, and this one. Okay. Okay. All right. So. So let's let's see how we can do that. Now I'm going to write um, this guy here, right? In in the following form, I'm going to pull out the x plus y. The reason I'm doing that is because if you should look at the representation here, it has an x plus y in it. Right, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, so if you pull out the x plus y in 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 brackets, you have the following. Right, in in brackets, you have the following. Right, now. This you can write as theta times yeah, like this. All right now, what you see is the following. You see that this can be written as what you have in the square brackets can be written as a function a of y divided by x plus y, where the function a of omega, let's say, is theta omega squared minus theta omega plus one. Do, do you guys see that? Because you see that inside the square brackets, what you have is theta times something squared minus theta times something plus plus one. So hence the function a of omega must be theta omega squared minus theta omega plus one. Now we need to show that this function So in order to answer part A of the question, we need to show that A satisfies the following condition. Condition one is that A of zero, it must be one. 
condition two is that a of one must be one and condition three is um, that condition three is that the the max of omega minus one minus omega is less than or equal to a of omega less than or equal to one for all omega right okay and this um, to to verify this condition you can split this up into different for example i mean this is equivalent to say this condition three is equivalent to saying the following that a of omega is is greater than or equal to omega for all omega a of omega is greater than or equal to one minus omega for all omega and a of omega is less than or equal to one for all omega right okay so let me call this alpha let me call this beta let me call this gamma right just for sake of notation right I, I hope you are with me so far and the final the final uh, condition that you need to check is that a is a convex function and I uh, and I told you yesterday how, to, not yesterday, I'm in on, on Tuesday, how to check something is a convex function. To, sex, to check that something is a convex function, you need to take the second order derivative and show that it's positive. All right, so let's check. Okay, let's start with it, number one, right? Part one, I mean. Part one is A of, a of zero a of zero is theta times uh, zero squared minus theta times zero plus one which is clearly satisfied okay so condition one is true condition two a of one is theta times one squared minus theta times one plus one and this is equal to clearly one. So this is true too, right? This, this I should have said this is equal to one, all right? So condition one and two are true. Okay, now then for to check condition three, I'm gonna check each of these conditions, alpha, beta, and gamma, right? So let's, let's start with condition alpha, which is A of omega must be greater than or equal to omega for all omega, right? Uh, which is the same as saying that, which is the same as saying that um, theta omega squared minus theta omega plus one is greater than or equal to omega for all omega, right? Now you should take this to this side, right? You will get uh, theta omega, omega minus one plus one minus omega greater than or equal to zero for all omega. And this becomes, this you can factorize as one minus theta omega times one minus omega greater than or equal to zero for all omega. And this is true because this is, sorry, this is, this is always true because theta is a number between zero and one, as I said, because theta is a number between zero and one, okay? So condition alpha is true. Now let's check condition beta. One condition beta is that a of omega must be greater than or equal to one minus omega for all omega, right? Which is the same as saying that
Okay. And this is the same as saying that um, theta omega squared plus theta times one minus omega is greater than or equal to zero for all omega. Now this is once again is true because this is non-negative and this is non-negative because theta is a, once again, theta is a number between zero and one. Okay. All right, so we check condition beta. Now the next condition we need to check is condition gamma. Now to check condition gamma, which is we need to check whether a of omega is less than or equal to one for all omega, right? So this is the same as saying that Yeah, and this is the same as saying that okay, and this is the same as saying that and this is once again true because Omega is non-negative, theta is non-negative. Omega minus one is negative, is, is uh, non-positive, right? Therefore, this condition is true. Remember, omega is a number between zero and one, okay? So, so we checked, we, okay, just to return to this, we checked condition one, condition two, and condition three. So the only remaining condition that needs to be checked is this one, all right? So, so let's, let's go to that. So to check condition um, four, right? We need to find the second order derivative of, remember we know that A of omega is equal to theta omega squared minus theta omega plus one. So the first order derivative is, the first order derivative is two theta omega minus theta. The second order derivative is two theta, which is positive. Hence, hence A is convex. Remember the, 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 easiest, the easiest way to check that a function is convex is to take the second order derivative. If it is positive for all omega, then it's the function is convex. So, so we have proved, so the, the, the final conclusion is that, that G, G bar corresponds to to a bivariate okay, to, corresponds to a bivariate the stream value distribution. Okay, so that's part A of, so returning to, returning to the tutorial question, right, which is trying to find out where it is. Just try, just give me a sec. Yes, here we are. So returning to this is the tutorial question, right? So we've done we done part A of question one. Part B to part G are pretty trivial, so I'm not going to do them. I will just show you how to do these parts uh, without actually deriving anything. So, for example, um, um, to Let me let me put this here. Um, part B, uh, part B is about finding the joint P CDF. So to, to find the joint CDF, we just need to 
you just need to use the formula that I gave you a long time ago. Remember, the joint CDF is related to the joint survival function. I mean, I think you should remember this. I gave you this a uh, long time ago, I mean, many, several weeks ago, you may recall. This is a relationship between the joint CDF and the joint survival function. So, so to do part B, you just need to simply use this relationship. Part C, part C is to find the conditional CDF of Y given X equal to X, right? And to do that, you just simply take the partial derivative of G which is the joint CDF with respect to X and divide by divide by this. This is because this is the, the marginal PDF of X. Remember, the marginals are exponential, exponentially distributed. To do part D, you will, um, which is to find the conditional CDF of X given y equal to y, uh, you do something similar. So this time you will differentiate the joint CDF with respect to with respect to y and then divide by e of minus y, right? So that's the answer for conditional CDF of x given y. Part E is to find the joint PDF joint PDF of X and Y. Uh, that is given by, that's given by the following. I think I, I, I mentioned this formula to you before. To find the joint uh, PDF, you just differentiate the joint CDF uh, with respect to X and Y, All right? So there's a mixed derivative. So let me call this uh, little g, All right? Okay, and part F, uh, part F is to find the conditional PDF of Y given uh, X equal to X, right? And the formula for this is given by little gxy, which is the answer that you got in part E. This is the PDF divided by divided by this. And finally, part part G. Part G is the conditional um, conditional PDF of X given y equal to y okay and this is given by given by this okay so these are the formulas you will need to use to to do part from part b to part g right so the only uh, the only difficult part in in this question i mean in every question in this sheet the difficult question part is part a so all the way from part B to part G are straightforward. It's just calculations, right? So you just only need to con be concerned about part A. All right, any, any questions so far, guys? Hello, guys. You have any, if you have questions, feel free to write to me in the chat box. And okay, so that's question one. Now let's move on to question two, which is, here your G bar is given by this alpha is a number between zero and one. And you want to, uh, again, the same kind of question. So the only difficult part is, but I will only, only do, I will only do part A and, and leave the remaining for you to do, all right? Okay, so, so let me, let me do this, all right? So this is part, question, question two, okay, question two. Um, so here your your G bar 
question two, uh, part A. So your G bar is equal to, is equal to exponential of, let me use uh, instead of alpha because I don't want to confuse. Let me use A instead of alpha, okay? A x y divided by x plus y minus x minus y. Uh, where x is positive, y is positive, and a is a number between zero and one. Now, once again, <coughs> you should put uh, you should put uh, y equal to zero and x equal to zero. You will see. All right, you should put x equal to zero first. That this is it. This will be, this will become this, and if you put um, y equal to zero, uh, this will become okay. All right. So this. So once again, what you have is that uh, the the marginal of x. is an exponential distribution. This is also exponential, all right? So these are, excuse me. These are, okay, all right. So, so the first thing we need to do is to write, is to write this in the form of a, of the representation four. So that's what I'm going to do now. So, I'm going to pull out the minus x plus y. So, in brackets, you will have minus a okay like this right and this you can write as follows this you can write as a times um, Okay, all right, so now this is of the form of the representation number four, right, where, which is, which is this one, and, and your function A, your function A of omega in this case is is minus a times omega times one minus omega plus one. Okay. All right, guys, you, you see that because this is your omega, this is one minus omega. So your function is minus a omega times one minus omega plus one. So we need to check whether this function satisfies the four conditions. So the condition one is that a of zero, which is minus a times zero times one minus zero plus one equal to one. So it is satisfied. Second condition is that a at one, which is minus a times one times one minus one plus one. And this is clearly equal to one. So it is satisfied. Now condition alpha, remember to check condition alpha, uh, we need to check whether A of omega is greater than or equal to omega for all omega. 
Vâng. Okay, so that's the same as saying that uh, minus a omega times one minus omega plus one is greater than or equal to omega for all omega, right? And this you can write as follows. If you, if you rearrange the terms, right? If you, re, if you bring the omega to the left-hand side and rearrange the terms, this is what you will get. You will get one minus omega times one minus a times omega greater than or equal to zero for all omega. Now this is true. This is true because because a is a number between zero and one. And maybe we assumed that earlier, right? So because a is a number between zero and one, this must be non-negative for all omega, right? So that completes a condition alpha. Now condition beta is similar. Um, okay. So this is the same as saying that so not alpha, I mean A confusing a okay now if you rearrange the terms here you will get you will get the following okay now this is once again true because a is, because one minus omega is a number between zero and one and a is a number between zero and one. So this whole thing here must be non-negative, right? So because Okay, so we checked condition, condition beta. Now the next condition we need to check is condition alpha, right? Excuse me. Um, so this is condition, sorry, condition gamma, I meant condition gamma. So to check this condition, which is if omega is less than equal to one for all omega, which is the same as saying that one minus a times okay and this is the same as saying that minus a okay all right because this is non negative a is non negative minus number, so this must be true, right? Okay, so, and finally, condition four, to check that something is a convex function, as I said before, you need to take the second order derivative. So you first, you take the first order derivative. The first order derivative of this is minus alpha plus two alpha, Omega and the second order derivative is is two alpha, which is positive. So hence A is convex. All right. So hence we have shown
All right. All right. So that completes part A of question two. Part the remaining parts are similar. So I'll just write it down. The remaining. The remaining parts are similar to question one, right? So I'm not going to do that. Okay, so now let's return to the, the problem sheet, which is so there's only one more question left. I'm trying to find where it, okay, here we are. So we've done, so we've done question, question one and question. Question two. So question three is this one. <coughs> question three is, so here you have G bar equal to, given by this, where A is a positive number, right? Um, so let me show you if I have time, let me show you how to do this. Um, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, question three. Um, so here you have a G bar equal to E of X power A plus Y power A one over A where A is positive, X is positive, Y is positive. And it's easy to check that G, uh, G bar at zero comma Y is, is this, and G bar at X comma zero is, um, is this. Right, so hence, hence the marginals, that is the marginal of G, the X is, uh, is this, and the marginal of Y, G, the Y component is, is this. So we have, we have um, exponential marginals, okay. So we once again we're gonna use the the, the represent the fourth representation I talked about on Tuesday. Okay, so I'm gonna write G bar, which is this one, right? I'm gonna as usual I'm gonna pull out the x plus y outside, and in bracket you're gonna have the following. You're gonna have Okay, you're gonna have this, right? And this, you can write as, this you can write as E, okay, All right, where, where your A, the function A is gonna be this guy is gonna, this is one, this is your omega. So this is gonna be one minus omega. So it's gonna be one minus omega power A, omega power A, power this, right? Okay. So we need to check the four conditions one more time. Um, right, so let's start with condition, condition one. All right, which is A of, zero equal to one minus zero power a zero power a right and this is clearly equal to one so condition one is satisfied 
condition two at one equal to one minus one power a one power a this is also equal to one so condition two is satisfied condition three um, condition three you can um, which is a of omega is greater than equal to omega right um, so So should, I should say condition alpha, sorry, condition alpha is A of omega greater than or equal to omega for all omega. So which is the same as saying that right? And this is the same as saying that And these two guys cancel out. So right, and this is always true, right? Because one minus omega is a number between zero and one. A is a positive number, so this must be true. And condition beta is similar. Okay, so this is the same as saying that All right, now if you take the power, then this becomes omega power A. Oh, sorry, this is A, guys. What am I doing? Okay. Now these two guys cancel. So, so what you have is omega power A greater than or equal to zero for all omega and which is which is true all the time okay um all right so that's condition beta now the next thing next thing i'm gonna check is condition gamma condition gamma okay i will do this in a different way right um i will do this in a different way as follows because omega is a number between zero with, less than or equal to one, I mean, between zero and one, this implies that omega power A has also has to be, has to be less than or equal to, less than or equal to A. This assuming, assuming A is greater than one, but this, this will not hold so we have to assume this condition that a the the number the the parameter a is greater than or equal to one. So if a is greater than one, any number any number between zero and one, power to something greater than one will be less than or equal to that number. I'm sure you know that, right? And similarly, okay. Similarly, because one minus omega is a number between zero and one, so you should power that to something that is greater than one, that has to be less than or equal to one minus omega. Now, if you sum these two, if you sum these two, this implies that, this plus this is this, this plus this is one, right? So, now this implies that, This is I mean for all obviously for all omega, right? And this implies that if omega 
is less than or equal to one for all omega. So we, we, we proved condition gamma, but only under the assumption that A is great. You, can't, you cannot make these arguments without assuming that A is greater than one, right? Okay. So that's condition gamma. Now, finally, condition four. To check condition four, you need to, you have the function A of omega, which is, which is this. Right, this is the function. So you need to find the the first order derivative. Uh, I'm not going to show you the details, but I'm sure you guys know differentiation better than I do. So I will just write down the the derivative without actually showing you the details. But I'm sure you can work it out. You can work it out yourself. I'm sure. So this is the first order derivative of uh, of a of omega right okay okay now the second order derivative is you need to use the product rule right? you need to use the product rule of this and um, after a while um, I'm running out of time once again. So I'm, I'm gonna just write down the answer without showing you the details. This is, this is what you will get. If you do the math, right? Um, Okay, this is what you will get. Right now, you can see, right, this a minus one is positive if a is greater than one, if a is greater than one. So we need to assume this one, one more time, right? And this guy here, this guy here is, is positive too, right? Because omega is a number between zero and one. And this guy here, right because you have a square outside it has to be positive or at least greater than or equal to zero right and this guy here because omega is a number between zero and one this has to be positive right and this guy here because omega is a number between zero and one this has to be positive so the conclusion is that this is greater than zero for all, but this is greater than zero for all omega. So, so A is convex. So hence, we're nearly done. Hence G bar corresponds to a bivariate extreme value distribution. All right, so that completes part A. Uh, the remaining parts are similar to question A, question one, the remaining parts are similar. To question one. Okay. All right, guys. 
Are you okay with this or not? I mean, yeah, I mean, so the difficult part is to show part A, that is to check the condition one, condition two, condition three, which involves three different conditions, alpha, beta, gamma, and condition four. Um, I mean, there are plenty of examples like this. You should go to the course website, you will see many examples like this. Um, okay. Any questions, guys? Hello, you okay? Okay, guys. All right, so next week we will have a revision. All right, so please, any questions you guys have, bring uh, any any kind of question um, based on the past exam papers or, or anything that I have covered, which is not clear, please uh, bring to the classes next week, All right? Okay, so obviously you don't need to wait till next week. I mean, you can ask me by email or Skype or Zoom or, or phone if any, any time 24 seven before that too, okay? All right, so, um, so I'll see you soon guys. So take care of yourself and I'll talk to you soon, okay?